All right, let's start out with Bobby Pruitt leaves and you go and you hire Bobby Stoops. What was it about him that you you said, this is the right guy? I know Bobby was a defensive coordinator at Kansas State. They were in the top rankings nationally defensively. Uh, he's secondary coach, and uh, we already had the other coaches in place. Uh, most of them were my Duke coaches. Uh, every now and then when I see Bobby, he said, yeah, I came and mingled in with your Duke guys, and away we went. And that's what happened. So Bobby ran a man-to-man uh, combination zone and so forth, and uh, we were we were always fundamentally very sound. And we had a lot of good players, obviously. And uh, Bobby did a super job, really, all three of those years. And the '97 and '98 defenses were probably just as good as '96. But for some reason, we lost that one game uh, the, the last two years that Bobby was here. The Tennessee game, the hype was just crazy for that game. Uh, you know, Heisman. So how did you keep your guys focused? Oh, we didn't get all that hyped up. I don't think about that second game of the season up there. We uh, we knew they'd be loud, and uh, we knew that the Tennessee fans had talked it up. I think they hyped it up more than we did, to tell you the truth. And, and they didn't play very well starting out. Uh, I guess they didn't play very well. We had them 35 to nothing, and then lo and behold, we give up an 80-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Tico Brown came out on his own. I found out later, put the backup safety in, and Peyton threw an 80-yarder. That really, uh, they had a chance to get back in the game because there was all kind of time left, uh, even though we had 35. But uh, fortunately, uh, we held on and, and beat them. That next five-game run mm-hmm. against SEC teams, I think you outscored know, scored them like 230 to 37. It was the, the darndest thing I've ever seen. Was that as impressive as you guys? Yeah, Pat, we didn't realize, I didn't realize that uh, that 96 season, we scored over 50 points every game in the Swamp here. Uh, I was just looking back at some what were some favorite games uh, that one of those sports writers had asked me. And, uh, yeah, the, the least we scored was 51 against Auburn. And then we had 56 against LSU. But uh, so many crucial games really uh, all during my career, and really every Florida coach is away from here because the game against Georgia's in Jacksonville right. and then the SEC championships in Atlanta and so forth. And it was neat uh, in 91 to win the only uh, SEC championship ever at Florida Field because now the, the game's always uh, in Atlanta. So, uh, uh, but we had a wonderful run here in the swamp. Oh gosh, our guys love playing here. And we lost a few, but it took some funny bounces that the other team got to, to beat us. Usually, the uh, FSU game was it during the game that you could see these late hits, or was it once you watched the end zone? I know you brought us in and watched the end zone film. Mm-hmm. Was that when you kind of said, "Wow, what what was going on here?" Yeah, that game was. Uh, uh, something that uh, I hope the SEC is not very proud of because we had SEC referees. And uh, back then, Pat, they actually had a rule. The head of officials told the guys if a player is within one step of the quarterback and he already knows he's already thrown the ball, he can clobber it. And that, that was the, the way the referees described it. And, uh, and of course, they knocked Danny down uh, 32 times, I think it was, and they only called two roughings. They, they could have called nine or ten. Uh, I think the worst one, uh, he threw a touchdown uh, on a slant. Uh, I think it was in the second quarter. And a good two seconds later, a guy come diving right at his knees. And you know, he jumped, jumped, got his knees out of the ground. And the referee threw the flag for roughing the passer. And, of course, we had to decline it because we already thrown a touchdown pass. And, uh, but anyway, it was uh, just a matter of me uh, speaking up for Danny, speaking up for our quarterbacks. That's not the way the game football is supposed to be played. We all know that now, but 20 years ago, they didn't know that. Uh, the SEC has changed their way of calling rough the passer now. When a guy throws it and you know he's already thrown it, you can't clobber it. And, but they didn't do it that way back then. How did you get your team refocused for the Alabama game the next week? Uh, it took a little while. Uh, we had some... Uh, high goals that year and uh, I remember we came back and we always practiced Monday night back then took Sunday off always and uh, we grouped up Monday night and uh, I think we watched a little bit of the tape of FSU games but I, I said fellas we're not practicing tonight we're going to all go home and lick our wounds and guess what we're going to play for the SEC championship this Saturday uh, we may not reach all of our goals this year but winning the SEC is one of the biggest ones every year so let's get ready. Let's go win us a championship. So that was the message, and uh, we 
Somebody said, you didn't practice on Monday? I said, no, we didn't practice a down. We practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then, you know, flew up Friday and, and, and played them Saturday. And obviously Danny and Redale Anthony, uh, Redale had three touchdown passes, Danny threw six. Somebody said, I think Alabama had only given up six touchdown passes all year. So uh, it's interesting. Sometimes when you practice two or three days, uh, your team plays better than if you practice five before a game. I, I don't know why that is, but sometimes it happens that way. Did you watch the Texas Nebraska game, mm -hmm. or was it, or was that something you found out about mm -hmm. later? No, I watched. I may have watched a little bit of it, but uh, we were after the pregame meal. Seems like uh, seems like we were playing about an eight o'clock game yeah, that night. It was a night game. Uh, so it seems like that one was uh, winding down around five or so, I'm not sure. And a lot of our players uh, came running out of their rooms celebrating. And uh, I was on the elevator coming out with Danny talking about ball playing. I said, what are you guys doing? I said, Coach, Texas just beat Nebraska. I said, man, man we can't worry about Texas and Nebraska. We, we got Alabama to play here in a few minutes for the SEC. And, oh, yeah, we know, we know, Coach. But uh, that was the first, uh, first or second of the miracles that had to happen for us to get a rematch. And then, of course, we had to beat Alabama. And then, of course, uh, Ohio State had to beat Arizona State for Rose Bowl. Uh, so all those things uh, occurred for us uh, after we had lost to FSU. That was another hotel celebration. Um, Gonzalez, mm -hmm. I believe you guys are staying at. Right. Uh, we just pulled in to Gonzalez, and it was in the fourth quarter, and the pregame meal was ready. I told the guys, go to the room, watch the end of the game. I'm going to watch it too. So we'd come to the pregame meal, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whenever. <clears throat> uh, so everybody headed to their rooms. And uh, when Ohio State scored in, they all come running out again <laughs> into the, we sort of had the middle area there of the Holiday Inn. It was sort of built like a horseshoe. And uh, so we went in there and had the pregame meal. And uh, I never will forget, I said, fellas, it's obviously the Lord has smiled on us. He has put it in our hands now. Uh, but as the Bible says, uh, God helps those who help themselves. we got to help ourselves if we're going to beat FSU uh, tomorrow night. You told me down in Daytona that the Nebraska game showed you the shotgun might be necessary at some point. The FSU game probably showed you missed more. It. Yeah, yeah, we were, it. yeah, yeah. As you know, we're doing pretty good without the shotgun. Uh, but then, uh, after the really after the game at FSU, uh, I asked Wiley Rich, "Can you snap it?" He said, "Sure, Coach." He did some in high school, and Danny had done some, and I didn't even realize. Uh, so we put it in before the Alabama game, uh, the SEC game there in '96, and then of course in the championship game, we used it quite a bit also. Yeah. The um, obviously the play that Ike made was tremendous, but you and I and Danny have talked about that seven or eight yard pass mm -hmm. that could have gone back the other way and snuck somehow in there. Yeah, to me that was the play of the game. We were up 24-20. We got on the one yard line. We ran a one back off tackle play and we sort of zone block it and they, they got a guy through there and uh, through Fred I think for about a four or five yard loss. And, and then all of a sudden we had third and seven, called timeout. And uh, I'm over there trying to make up the play. Uh, we figured they would zone up. They wouldn't give us a chance to throw a fade or a slant. Uh, so I had Ike and Redell there. I said, we're getting four wides. And uh, Ike, you sort of clear through. And Redell, you come off his butt and try to hit him with a slant, sort of right in between the, the two linebackers and so forth. And Redell, this is what a lot of people don't say, Redell said, Coach, Ike's hot. Let him catch it. I'll clear through. I said, okay, Ike, you take it. Redell, you clear through. So sure enough, uh, Redell sort of cleared the middle linebacker, and Ike ran a slant, and uh, Danny barely got it off. I think our left guard missed his block, and their linebacker almost got it, but he missed it. Uh, but Ike, not only did he catch it on about two, three-yard line, he, he had to dive in the end zone and break a tackle. If uh, their DB stymies him right there, he wouldn't have made it. Uh, so going up, uh, 31 to 20 was a lot better than 27 20 obviously did you feel at the end of the game you needed to score some a lot of points because no. so the pollsters wouldn't have any doubts about who the best team was no in fact when the game was over i didn't know we were national champs norm carlson 
came said, Coach, we won it. We're national. I said, how do you know they haven't voted yet? He said, well, I think they're going to. But that was not my mindset and most of our team is we just want to beat FSU. We wanted to knock them out. And uh, I believe if Arizona State had beaten Ohio State, if all those other things, I, I think we would still play about the same way. We, we wanted to beat, beat a team that uh, uh, I, I don't think they played fair. I don't think that's the way football is meant to be played. You're not supposed to try to hurt uh, players on the other team. You're not supposed to brag about hurting quarterbacks. And that's what uh, they did back then. Uh, FSU does not play that way anymore. I uh, have tremendous admiration, Jimbo Fisher, and the way they play now. So, But that's what they, they, they did 20 years ago. And you took the team back out to get a team picture. Was that mm-hmm. something, that's something you've done when you've won championships? Yeah, you we, didn't really win a championship then, but you mm-hmm. didn't know that you'd Didn't won know, but we had a good idea. Most people thought, uh, since everyone had one loss and we beat the, the team that didn't have one, uh, that we would get voted in. Uh, but, yeah, we, we had a lot of good fortune uh, Pat back in 96. A few years later, they, they matched up one versus two. Right. And if they'd done that, Arizona State would play the FSU. We wouldn't have had a shot. Talk about the celebration back here in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an unbelievable crowd. You got in the chant, we were number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that must have been fun. To yeah, I think, uh, I think all the Gators that came to our celebration here in the stadium uh, after that uh, enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I remember, I think I said, this is for all Gators. Some of them up in heaven uh, waiting to hear that we're number one. Uh, so there's always something about the first time ever. And, of course, Urban's team came in, did the same thing, won a couple national championships. Uh, but that was a good day uh, here in the swamp. And uh, those championships, uh, you know, you celebrate them for a lifetime. And uh, now we're 20 years removed from that. Uh, the players are now realizing when I used to tell them those championships are forever. Uh, you got memories of a lifetime, and so all those all those teams have those.